Hi, my name is James, and today we're going to be checking out the new Rode Wireless Go. In this video, we'll be checking out the overview of the product and some cool features. We're going to be plugging in a variety of different lapel mics into it. We're going to answer some questions that have been sent in to us by our customers. We're going to compare it to the Rode Filmmaker kit and see the differences. And we're also going to show you how you can use it with your smartphone, a portable recorder, your camera, as well as an interface. Let's get started. First things first, this thing's pretty cool. It's only 31 grams, super light, easy to be placed on your talent, uh, and it's very comfortable to wear. I don't even feel it. I've got it in my pocket at the moment. You can have it on the side here or on your collar here, but I find that it works best off center. It is an omnidirectional microphone, so you don't have to worry about too much about where the placement is, but directly, it is quite bright if it's directly under. So offset seems to work for me. It's only 299 bucks retail, which is fantastic for the price point. Like there's nothing out there at the moment that competes with this. And it's very easy to use. You just turn them both on, it pairs within a couple of seconds and you're ready to go. You don't really have to know any audio knowledge to be able to use this and get great results. There are two units, the RX receiver and the TX transmitter. Both units are charged by USB-C and they have a lithium ion battery. You can run eight of them at the same time in the same area. The transmitter has an onboard condenser omnidirectional microphone. This has a frequency range of 50 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It's almost got a built-in high pass filter. It's got a 3.5 TRS input that you can pair up with a whole bunch of different microphones such as the Rode SmartLav Plus, the Rode Lavalier, the Rode HS2 headset warm mic, as well as a whole bunch of other external mics. But you will need an adapter or adapters depending on which way you go, such as the SC3 or the SC7. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a lock-in nut, so it's not gonna be secured. You just need to make sure that you don't accidentally plug it. The receiver has an onboard screen. It shows you the battery life of both the receiver and the transmitter. It shows the audio level of the microphone. It shows the audio level going out into your recording device in the bottom left that you can also tailor to minus six dB and even minus 12 dB via the button underneath the bottom left. It's got a pairing status on the bottom right of the screen and a sun icon that tells you if you're using the battery saving mode or not. And you can trigger that by hitting the top power button just once instead of holding it. It features a dual purpose mount that fits on the shoe mount of any camera or clipped on straps or shirts or whatever. It comes with Rode's two year warranty and it's firmware updatable. What's in the box? It comes with both the transmitter and receiver, two windshields that you're probably gonna lose very fast, a USB-C to USB-A cable for a charging, an SC2 cable to plug into any 3.5 line input, and a pouch for storing. It broadcasts on the new Series 3 2.4 gigahertz digital transmission band. It's optimized for smaller environments, such as conventions, interviews, hotels, shopping malls, places that have a lot of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth interference, works really well on them because it uses 128-bit encryption as well as using the complex algorithm that allows it to jump from two frequencies that it's broadcasting at the same time and be able to choose the best frequency for the best, clearest sound. It has seven hours of battery life, but I've just had it confirmed to me that it's only when the battery power saving mode is on. The audio has now changed and I'm using the SmartLav Plus with the SC3 adapter straight into the transmitter. And that's what we're listening to now. Now we're gonna look at some questions that have been sent in to us. Yes, there is a gain control at the bottom, which allows you to choose from unity gain, negative six dB or negative 12 dB. It is quite a hot mic. Mm. 
Not really. I think Rode would just replace the whole unit for you. I think it would be a lot easier. Well, I don't think you'd be wanting to use it in a storm or in a, you know, raining outside. Maybe light rain and light mist will be fine, especially if you use the little windshield that comes with it. Um, but I don't think it's really designed to be rugged outdoors. No. 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 I hope it does in the future, but no. Well, a filmmaker kit is definitely Rode's top end wireless belt pack solution. Whereas the wireless Go is more of an entry level semi pro for the emerging creator. Just two different levels. If you'd like to do a bit more of a deeper dive in the differences between the filmmaker and the Go wireless, we've included a simple PDF comparison sheet in the link below. So I have now changed the mic to a Sennheiser MKE40. This is one of their top end lapel mics that we have here. Uh, and it sounds pretty good. Now I want to talk to you about how to hook it up with all your different devices. So first things first, how do you connect it with a camera? It's very simple. It's pretty much just with the SC2 kit that comes, or SC2 adapter that comes with the box. It's just a 3.5 TRS to 3.5 TRS. You just plug in straight into your line input on your camera. What if my camera doesn't have that and I want to run through a preamp that only has XLR? So plugging into an XLR input, you can go directly into a VXLR road adapter from a 3.5 TRS to 3.5 TRS cable. How do I plug it in to my phone? That you will need two adapters. One is the Apple headphone adapter that converts your power of your phone to the 3.5 headphone female. And you get a 3.5 TRS to 3.5 TRRS female to plug in your mic. And depending on the mic, it could just be a simple 3.5 female to 3.5 TRS input. You can also use the SC7, which is just a 3.5 TRS to 3.5 TRRS adapter, both male and either end, and you can just plug the three band into your... Oh. Yeah. How do I plug it into a jack input? You need a cable that is a 3.5 TRS from the output of your receiver to a single 6.5 TS jack cable, which is a mono cable. It will go straight in and you'll start recording. Here's an experiment. I've used the SC3 with a Rode SC6 little adapter that allows you to plug two lapels in at the same time and it's working. So I've currently got an iRig lapel mic that we're listening to right now. This is the iRig and the SmartLav plugged in directly at the same time using the SC6 adapter. Cool. You can have two things at the same time, which is pretty sweet. So who is going to use this product? Well, we can think of a few. Uh, amateur to semi-pro filmmakers and sound engineers. Presenters and performers. You could even run a splitter out so you can run ASEN to your portable recorder and ASEN to front of house. Education institutes, really great for recording lectures, all that kind of jazz. Vloggers, YouTube, you say it, all those streaming people out there, super easy to get in with good quality wireless sound and possibly even real estate agents. And there you have it. That's the new Rode Wireless Go system in a nutshell. I hope this video has been informative and answered some questions that you had, especially with checking out all the different lapel mics that you can use with it. Which was your favorite? Which do you reckon sounded the best? Let us know, leave a comment, and I'll see you next time.